the moon. It inspires composers and poets, plays matchmaker to lovers. It makes us a little crazy sometimes, and its gravity pulls our oceans into tides. That same gentle gravity has also been pulling at man from the beginning of time to leave the Earth itself and someday walk on the moon. When I was in the sixth grade back in 1961, my dad came home with a model from work of something called Project Apollo. It was something he was working on. And I took it to school for show and tell. And the kids in my class were absolutely the first kids in the whole world to see a model of this thing. And I demonstrated it. I said, this thing's going to fly to the moon. And, and then uh, this thing called the limb, the spidery things are going to come out of the rocket and they're going to land on the moon. And guys are going to get out and walk on the moon. And, and everybody in the class is like snickering. And then finally the teacher interrupts and goes, Chris, Chris, come on. Do you really believe that this is going to happen? And everybody in the class starts to laugh. And I'm sitting there really embarrassed. And I said, yeah, it's going to happen. And I guess nobody was really ready to hear it yet. Who could blame them? In 1961, space travel still seemed about as silly as it did in Georges Méliès' 1902 film, A Trip to the Moon. America's first attempts at launching satellites blew up on the pad, while the Russian Sputnik satellites seemed to be laughing at us from space. The first man in space was a Soviet, Yuri Gagarin. We were losing the space race. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. President John F. Kennedy made believers out of most of us when he spoke those words to Congress. He bailed me out too. Neil Armstrong is the man, who, the first man who landed on the moon. It seemed so strange to be sitting in Mike Evans' sixth grade class at Parkdale Lane School so many years later, talking about things that were once dreams of the future when I was that age, and are now deeds of the past to these kids. One small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. The spacecraft are in museums now. If we're all three of these, the Mercury back there, the Gemini, what do you call them? It's me. They call this part of the San Diego Aerospace Museum Wally World because Wally Shara was the only man to fly all three Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo spacecraft. Mercury was really being, was built to be flown by a chimpanzee. And we modified it so we could make an input. We didn't really do much in Mercury. But Mercury gave America faith in its space program. John Glenn, Wally Shara, and the other Mercury 7 became heroes. After Project Gemini spacewalks, it was time to shoot for the moon. Even the tragic loss of three Apollo astronauts in a launch pad fire didn't set the program back for long. I, for one, said I'm tired of wearing a black armband more than a month or so. And the crew and I took our armbands off and went to work to get another spacecraft going. A year later, Shara flew that redesigned spacecraft. Nice to see it here. When San Diegan Bill Anders looks at the spacesuit he wore when he, Frank Borman, and Jim Lovell became the first men to fly to the moon in 1968, he remembers they weren't moonstruck. They were Earth-struck. It just took everybody aback. I mean, here was this gray, dark lunar surface, colorless, against a black backdrop of space. And then suddenly, up jumped uh, from the lunar horizon the Earth. Twelve, eleven, ten. This was it. Ignition sequence start. Apollo 11 was about to blast off for the moon. Three men, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins had been sitting atop the massive Saturn V rocket for hours as they waited and the world waited anxiously, a moment mankind had been waiting for from the beginning of recorded history. What a moment. Man on the way to the moon. And this was history. Everyone's dreams were riding with the three astronauts. It's been said by some, it's not about uh, reaching the moon, it's about leaving Earth. And leave Earth they did at 25,000 miles an hour, across a quarter million miles of space. We all had three days to contemplate the historic event and wonder what Armstrong would say when he set foot on the moon. Astronaut turned commentator Wally Shara wondered what his partner, CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite, would say. What are you gonna say when these guys step on the moon? Well, uh, yes, sir. <coughs> I have some very strong, uh, yes, yes. Roger, how does it look? People have wings. In lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin left Collins alone in the mothership as they flew down to the moon in a spidery lander called Eagle. The descent was hairy as they searched and searched for a safe spot to land, burning all but 10 seconds of their fuel. 
then. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Man on the moon. Oh, boy. Thank you. You're oh. looking good here. Mm. Mm. Boy, here's Walter looking in the camera. Golly, gee, wow. <laughs> the great journalist spoke. <laughs> you may have noticed Chira wiping away a tear. Chira was just that ultimate emotion. And that was an unbelievable thing. And it really it brought everything in perspective. All the years we'd spent getting ready for that mission. First try to land on the moon, if you imagine. We did it. We did it. You can't help but feel the way you felt then as you relive this moment. A billion people shared it. There had never been another moment in history like it. Where were you? I was watching in a radio newsroom in Baltimore along with the rest of the staff, and we were all too choked up to say anything. I was even too choked up to call up my once disbelieving sixth grade teacher on the phone and say, remember, you heard about it here first. Probably shouldn't say this on TV, but I was on the bed with Jan Armstrong. We were both watching television with about 20 other people in the room. For a few moments, the world was one, and the accolades that poured into this country from all over the world were unbelievable. An even more unbelievable moment came as Neil Armstrong took that first step. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Buzz Aldrin bounded down the ladder a bit later. Beautiful view. Is that something? That's him. That His thoughts at that moment? But there were more people, more human beings listening, paying attention, thinking about us than ever before in history. We landed on the moon six times in all, then left it behind. What then is Apollo's legacy? I think because of the landing on the moon, the unbelievable became believable, and I think everything is possible. Maybe someday we'll go back.